um, short presentation of myself uh, for those that might not know me. Um, I'm Antonio Nardella. I'm one of the community managers here at the IOTA Foundation. And we are here today in this learning circle or uh, in this working group or in this meeting to actually together learn about DAOs. So it's not that I'm a teacher, I'm not uh, an expert, far from it. I'm one of the community members like you that started exploring the crypto space and that is now um, widening uh, my, my, my horizon and trying to figure out, okay, what's, uh, what's there beyond and what, what is growing out of the crypto space. And one thing we discovered, um, all right, Voido, thank you very much. Thank you. So uh, one thing we discovered um, is that thanks to the technology um, of blockchain and smart contracts and tokens, uh, there was this, uh, this wave of, um, of people and thoughts and experiments that crystallized itself as these decentralized autonomous organizations. And the first time that you approach it, um, the first time that you approach it, it's really um, something vague since it's not totally clear what it is about. Um, it was um, really a broad spectrum of, of things uh, to, to learn. And it was um, pretty much um, important to, to dig deeper and to try to understand what the, um, what the, what this movement was all about, because in the end it's a movement. And um, if we want to cut it short, it is about taking decisions. It's about coordinating people in a decentralized manner. And so in the beginning, uh, probably it was more about, okay, um, we, have, uh, we have some tokens, we have some Ethereums, we have some money, we have some, of course, cryptocurrency, and how can we manage it at best to uh, achieve some goals? And I mean, I'm, again, I'm not an expert, I'm not a historian, I'm not going too deep into the whole discussion. The, the thing is that uh, the DAO space is evolving with time. It is growing, it is expanding and contracting because it's hitting the limitations of, um, of regulations like cryptocurrency. And it is a very, very nice um, space to actually explore how people work together and how to optimize uh, this way of organizing people to achieve goals. So you have resources, which might be um, money, let's say uh, crypto tokens. You have a goal, let's say buying the constitution, and now you have to organize it in such a way that you achieve this goal in the best and in the uh, in such a way that you avoid coordination failures, in such a way that you um, avoid um, useless processes and intransparency. And if you think about a DAO, a DAO is, let's say, um, a corporation, a company, a, a co-op, uh, people working together towards a goal, but in a really transparent manner, which means that the decisions are open and transparent the voting is open and transparent and um, it is and also the, the, the people making the proposals um, stand let's say naked before you in the sense of that they are themselves and they make these proposals and the, and the DAO tries 
to take the best possible decision with the available resources at hand. And this is where I think Kevin Ovoki, uh, or Ovochi, I think it's Ovoki, but uh, I'm not a uh, language expert, so if I'm saying it wrong, uh, please correct me, no worries, I, I love to be corrected, comes with one of the most interesting um, articles uh, about knowing the enemy and uh, coordination failures. So it is all about slaying Morloch. Um, Morloch is these, um, these, how do we call it, this monster, this, this, uh, this god of coordination failures. So I absolutely suggest to uh, listen to this podcast where they talk about Moloch and um, is uh, in such a way uh, this kind of god or entity uh, that uh, makes us uh, fail in coordination and this is more or less a and an, um, such a, a a figure such a distant figure from us because it is it is helpful to understand um, the uh, the philosophical part of it and uh, Ovoki and many many uh, others uh, talk about slaying Moloch about how Moloch is uh, making nations um, working as they are in such a bad manner how politics does not work because uh, there is um, no way that uh, people are working towards the same goal and so uh, it is really important in my opinion to uh, listen to their uh, to their podcast or even read um, read this article like like here you know? nation states refuse to give up n nuclear arms because they want to defend themselves despite the existential threats they pose to the world. Okay, this is a coordination failure. Why can't we, as as human, as nations, as people, you know, just agree? Hey, you know, uh, nuclear arms, nuclear weapons are freaking bad. All right, are deadly. Are not only killing people but destroying a whole ecosystem and making it unlivable for hundreds of years. Why don't we just coordinate and say, okay? let's give them up let's build i don't know nuclear reactors in space uh whatever on some kind of, of base on the moon with the same with that kind of of energy and do something else or um there are different other examples that they bring here and so the question is okay how how do we actually coordinate better and the um, the great way in which they try to explain this is of course this with the uh, prisoner's dilemma dilemma where you have the two prisoners they are put in two different cells they cannot understand what the other uh, says and um, here of course the best option would be to both just remain silent and serve one year in prison but they don't know it and there is this dilemma okay what is is the other one going to do is he going to betray me or is he going to uh to shut up like i'm going to do or what is going on and so there is this this uh dilemma where it's hard to understand what the other counterpart would do and trying to coordinate and trying to find the best solution in this uh, in this case is um, what changes actually the thing and um, also within DAOs I mean it is hard to be completely transparent it is hard to give up our self-interest if is it's really hard to um, to understand how my disadvantage in the short term might actually become an advantage uh, for everyone on the long term. And I think this is also something that we are living uh, pretty um, ac um, in, 
right now actually with the uh, proposal in the governance forum so there is this uh, community member copy which has some in my opinion good understanding of DeFi I mean I'm uh, totally a layman so uh, for me he's a god of DeFi but I I'm just saying that from what I see he's a really he has a really good understanding of DeFi and he made a proposal where he says okay let's extend the uh, tokens of the Shimmer network for of 20% and use that 20% uh, to foster ecosystem projects. And people say, hey, no, I mean, this 20% is going to dilute my holdings. Why, why now? Why do it? And stuff like that. And so the question is, okay, is my short term advantage of having 20% more uh, really that important? Or if I have 80% later, which has more value because it was possible to um, to foster an ecosystem and build stuff around um, around um, around Shimmer might give a bigger advantage, and um, and so there is already this the dilemma here. So what is important? The present me? Um, do we do? Um, everything in our self-interest and how will this impact with time and so here of course there is this moloch that by having people disagreeing and um, not coordinating correctly is, is um, growing and becoming strong within uh, the community and here is where Nikki Case uh, came up with this HTML5 game uh, which is the evolution of trust and so um, Mr. Whitehorse um, said that he played it I don't know if the other listeners played it but again I would absolutely um, invite you to do it yourself and to see what uh, it means and how it works and now we have um, the ability and the possibility through uh, crypto um, technology through uh, the blockchain technology to start um, to start uh, helping out and and uh, solving uh, this kind of coordination uh, failure of course it's not the technology itself so it's not like uh, blockchain is the solution it's about uh, the ability to make things transparent and really clear and here I love this take uh, of Avoki. I know that um, some might disagree here, but um, if we think about Bitcoin, uh, I mean, I've been in the Bitcoin space since 2011. So it's 10 years, 11 years now. Uh, it was pretty early. And what attracted me to Bitcoin, I mean, they were worth in 2011 around $1 or $3. It was pretty cheap it was yeah still more expensive than iota right now but it was not about okay i'm going to buy bitcoin and um, and become a millionaire uh, that was never my thought and uh, it was such a crazy thing back in the day it was um, you know some numbers on a ledger and i run a node and i can mine and i can send this number uh, to everyone around the world even on Sundays and nobody can stop me from doing that I mean this was this was eye-opening it was really as Awoki also says here it was not about making me rich because who would have thought that Bitcoin would become uh, what it is today and um, make it possible for the crypto space to evolve uh, but it gave me um, a sense of freedom because it gave me sovereignty over my at the time bitcoins I was free to transact anytime anywhere from any place with anyone um, I was free to use that technology to do as I please without banks uh, double checking, KYCing, AMLing, <laughs> uh, without uh, limitations. Um, I mean, yeah, 
I had peanuts. So it's not like I was sending around millions of dollars. But the thing is, the, the idea behind uh, economic freedom and freedom to transact and having keys and uh, this, at the time it was 12 words, I think, and then with the first uh, hardware wallet, it became 24 words. But still, I could uh, bring my whole stack of, of Satoshis uh, around uh, all over the world freely, without checks at the borders, without uh, having fear of um, having customs taking anything away from me. And this is a liberating thought because we are uh, we are um, thank you iota uh, 10t um, we are part of an economic um, system uh, we are part of a system where you have to have a bank account where uh, you cannot get money from your employ employer uh, to buy um, groceries if you do not have a bank account if they do not know what you do if they do not have um, if they do not uh, if if they do not have control of what you can do and how much money you can send around and that is something that you start feeling um, only once you get orange pilled, as they are saying nowadays. So, um, yes, Bitcoin was the creation to make people free from that financial system. Then history um, showed us that it's not true. It's all around us and they're doing everything possible to avoid this kind of uh, freedom and independence. But that's another, another thing. So, of course, um, those that are um, that are following uh, since such a long time, they saw Ethereum uh, grow and, um, and missed probably the Bitcoin boat and so they made their own fortune. And of course, in the beginning, they uh, started investing in the next best thing which was Ethereum and at that point um, it made of course some people rich and then it's um, the second phase after freeing yourself from the shackles is of course to have more free time to think and so they thought okay how can we make this world better and um, Ovoki is a person that I follow now for some time. I absolutely um, adore um, his thoughts and his uh, passion for uh, public goods and public funding. So his most known platform, which is Gitcoin, which is also mentioned here, is a platform where everyone can set up bounties and uh, rewards and um, no this is the wrong one it's uh, come on it's the CEO I was missed the, the link okay it's a platform where everyone can set up bounties where everyone can um, set up hackathons uh, give out grants and find grants to actually build and oh, I'm okay. I'm here in, in Chromium. I don't have my GitHub account here, and I used it myself. I, I tried it out because, of course, I want to figure out what it means. And it became sort of the go-to platform for um, Web3 developers to start figuring out uh, and earning some money. And you know, you can just go here and say, okay, let me. Uh, find some kind of issues um, let me see here uh, I'm not funding an issue I am want to explore bounties and so let's say okay hey uh, 
I can earn a hundred dollars to create a sim racing Grafana dashboard. Why? Why not? Sounds cool. It's a hundred dollars. Um, okay, these are pretty. Uh, here, build a censorship resistant block. Two thousand dollars in. Uh, don't ask me what BZZ is, but some kind of currency. And then you have here uh, RS RSS three bounty for ETH. Uh, Ethereum Shanghai Hackathon, three thousand dollars in uh, in Dai tokens. And so here you approach the Web three, you approach um, this crypto space, and you get some rewards for these bounties. And the best thing is, it's not Gitcoin giving you the money, but it's other organizations or other people giving out the money. And the thing is, I can myself set up a bounty for a few hundred dollars, for fifty dollars, for ten dollars and ask someone to help me out. And here is where actually um, the Web3 starts to fund itself. The Web3 starts to develop and uh, support itself. And this is where I would love to see um, uh, IOTA in, or Shimmer integrated or Assembly integrated so that we could use the hopefully built um, treasury to not only invest in, in our own ecosystem but start attracting talent from the Web3 space and start attracting people that are um, experts and might um, learn about IOTA this way. So it's one way of breaking the bubble. But the goal here is really to uh, fund public goods to so fund open source software fund tools that then um, in the end give back to the web3 space so um, I love the idea behind it I love um, how they're doing it and I think that they are achieving really really great things then they have these uh, grants um, which are coordinated by quadratic funding. This is a, a way of how it's done. And of course, another uh, project that I follow and that I use, which is rocky.com, exactly. This is a portfolio manager. So this helps you uh, track your funds and track your crypto tokens, NFTs, uh, DeFi in the Web3 space. And it's completely local. So you install it on your computer you use it from there you back up your data and it's not like uh, some web 2 uh, platform where they use the, the the data and they probably sell it too and they are supported by a one or more grants uh, from gitcoin and um, i uh, oh, they also support uh, bitpanda even though it's not it's not uh, mentioned here so this is what they do this they support projects for public goods and in this case you have a tool that helps people that manage crypto tokens that manage nfts that do DeFi, in doing what everyone has to do which is get back in the old world in the real world and pay their taxes and I think that it is really, uh, really great way of, um, of growing an ecosystem and the Web3 in general. Um, any questions so far? So let me uh, just unmute IOTA, Tanti and uh, Reknaz. Any questions so far? Um, any s s addition to what I've said so far? Uh, can you, I, I had an interruption in the line, can you uh, please repeat that? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, 
what what challenges do you see in this case? What uh, what surprises you uh, if we might uh, open this discussion up? No, that's true. Um, by being in such an open space, of course, uh, you uh, it's really different from from building within a company where you just build a product or a startup. And unless you present yourself to uh, to this kind of, of launch pads or um, or let's say sort of clubs where investors <laughs> meet, it's really hard to get your your product out of the door. On the other hand, here. Um, it is pretty easy to open up, but it also means that you open up yourself to, as you say correctly, to a community, so to people interested uh, in what you're doing and how you're doing it. Uh, in um, it, it is a challenge on one hand because, of course, um, let's say that critics can be really harsh, or uh, people not speaking a native language might use. Um, words in such a way that they can become hurtful but on the other hand opening up uh, yourself also to critics means also that you can get feedback really quickly um, the the important part of it is of course um, to still focus on what you're doing and uh, not get lost um, behind uh, or because of the whole lots of, of questions that might come so um, it is good to open up and, and show what you're doing and um, be really clear in the communication of what you're doing and challenge your own thoughts and on the other hand is also important to um, understand how far your you want your community to um, influence you in your decisions because the masses is not always right and if i um, probably next week or the other one i will uh, share a podcast link and there is a really important lesson there which is the loudest voices are not always those with the most to say so sometimes it's really um, more helpful to listen to that one person that says one thing one time instead of 50 people saying you're doing it wrong because probably they uh, might not have the, the the whole understanding of what you're doing so it's it's a, a really hard uh, challenge but uh, it's fascinating because it opens up also to collaborators it opens up to contributors uh, soon labs for example they opened up their their translations which made it possible like we are doing with firefly to have people translating their platform to um, to different languages and that's a really important contribution because the more languages your platform supports the more people you can reach and it's a small thing you might say but uh, it's really important in my opinion all right um, we are already half an hour in so let me see any other questions any other things um, mr whitehorse would you like to share anything if you read this article some of the insights that you absorbed of it that you learned from it Sure, 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 please do it. Yes, let me stop my streaming and please do so.
Yes. I can see yes. <laughs>
never can trust each other again because they always think the other one always cheats. So they introduce new faces. And here, I think it's it gets a little bit more uh, yeah, complex. So really take your time, play around. Here's a, a oh no, I, I think I'll go here. Uh, I'll keep this one here. Um, here it is, <clears throat> again, and this step I do, uh, I still do. Here it is, a very nurturing surrounding, like uh, people who just want to give out. Uh, these are the little parts of the uh, copycats. They are copy kittens, I think, yeah, copy kittens. Um, if someone makes a mistake, they try to, uh, yeah, they are like, it's not that bad, maybe it was a mistake, I'll try to trust them again, and if they, I can still trust you, we'll uh, figure something out. These guys here, uh, if they make a mistake, they try to learn from it. Um, like when they, when they act with uh, a very nurturing surrounding, they uh, are able to extract more points from them. They, um, it's something they learn. Yeah. That's in a very good uh, surrounding. And now in a bad surrounding. That is, um, that is the copy kittens. They realize sometimes mistakes can happen uh, and the surrounding is good. So they try to, uh, they get the points in the end. Yeah. And like I said, sandbox mode, you can uh, choose different populations, the pay of the rules. Uh, it's really interesting. I've tried something like a very nurturing surrounding, but people hold grudges and there's a tiny chance for mistake. And I think at some point, the uh, everyone just holds a grudge to, it, uh, to each other. It's It's pretty interesting to play around. Yeah. All right, thanks for sharing your insights. And again, it is a pretty simple in in its way. It's it's the how it's made and how it's presented. The game is really simple, but the concepts behind it are really interesting to explore and to understand more about game theory and how trust works and who will win in the end um, uh, based on on the behavior. And um, again. Mr. Whitehorse, I absolutely loved your presentation. So thank you very much for taking the time uh, to, yeah, to sure. share it with us. And I hope that others will also join other sessions uh, in the future and, and um, tell us more about what they learned uh, during uh, the, the day or the week or by reading um, articles or uh, playing games or whatever we will present in the future. Thanks again for uh, for everything. All right, now we have around 15 minutes before we close. And so I'm not going to rush through this article. Um, uh, I mean, of course, it's why decentralization matters. And yes, we have the coordinator. <laughs> no jokes. Um, here it is a really interesting um, article that explains um, what decentralization means. Uh, where it comes from, why we are trying to uh, break out of um, this um, construct of really big companies which are uh, in the end owning our information, owning our decisions. Um, there is a really good movie that I can suggest. Uh, uh, if you haven't seen it, uh, do so. It's called The Great yeah, Hack. Sorry, Antonio, you're not sharing your screen anymore. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. No problem. Um, I was clicking through the article, so it's nothing, um, nothing bad. But again, thank you. Yeah, I was talking about this movie called The Great Hack, so I'm not going to share any kind of illegal links. It should be still on, 
on uh, on Netflix, if I remember correctly. Yeah, Netflix. So um, it might give you an idea. It's it's a documentary, and it's about the Facebook uh, Cambridge Analytica data scandal, uh, where you gather some really important insights about how, with information and with uh, such centralized. Uh, platforms like Facebook it is possible to change people's opinions and the the really hack there is that they are not trying to change um, people's opinion that already have an opinion they try to capture the undecided so for example um, my mother she is politically undecided in the sense of that she does not have a strong feeling for any political party but I remember how her Facebook was plastered with certain kind of information. And of course, if you see certain kind of information constantly, if you are exposed to a certain kind of information, you start thinking in a certain way. And I absolutely suggest to uh, watch that movie, uh, maybe not tonight or today, but when you have time uh, to understand the power of information that big companies have and um, why it is important to again take back um, the web the the um, the internet take back the technology that connects so many people and here they talk about uh, the next era of the internet and um, why they have been dominant and how uh, crypto networks are a powerful way to develop community-owned networks. So um, it's like um, federalism, where it's not one huge nation, but um, different little federated states that decide based on their geography and try to collaborate and try to um, provide um, something to their population that works for them because of course I mean uh, I'm here in South Tyrol we speak Italian and German it was Austria uh, before it became Italy afterwards and it is different it is an autonomous region here in Italy but still uh, there are Italian uh, schools there are German schools um, and uh, the idea of having the um, Ital Italy as a sovereign nation deciding how uh, things should work here might not work because it's a special situation. It is um, constructed in, in time by the population, by uh, the economy that has been built. And it ma might make more sense to actually... Uh, give the region as much autonomy as possible and still contribute to the greater uh, nation of Italy. And it is happening. Um, it is strong in this, in this way, but I think it might be an interesting thought process for, um, for many other countries and regions out there. The fascinating thing about DAOs is that it is 99% digital. Um, um, and it also means that DAOs are a really great sandbox where you might have seen it, you might have heard it. Um, it is a sandbox where people are trying out different models. They are trying to import from, from companies what works and try to export what works in, within a DAO. Um, for example, we might encounter it later on. Uh, there are some strong people with anarchist background working in the crypto space because of the freedom that it gives, because of the opportunity of being uh, self-sovereign and um, decide by yourself and not um, be let's say i'm trying to be as as that diplomatic and as correct as possible um and not be just a servant to government and this is a harsh way of putting it 
But the idea here is really how can we figure out if systems work, if um, now let's put it really harsh, it is often said that socialism is bad and does not work. Well, there might be different levels of socialism. I mean, I'm in Italy and I've been to the uh, to New Jersey to in the US. I have relatives there. I've been there for Christmas some time ago. And I was asked by uh, my my grandfather's uncle father-in-law, <laughs> a really old person. I was asked, hey, but are you socialists in Italy? And I was like, well, actually not. We have a really strong right-leaning um, government, or we had at the time. And they were like, yeah, well, but Italy is socialist. No? And I was like, no, it's actually pretty much um, com governed by the, we call it in Italy, centrodestra, by the center-right. So it's more on the, um, uh, more kind of conservative and uh, if we w might want to compare it it's more on the republican side of things and they were pointing of course at healthcare it was the time of obama and, and medicare and they thought that italy was socialist and i was like okay i live almost in a fascist state here in italy and you know this is the the, the, the thing um you can only grasp what you see and what you learn and when you are th uh, taught, te uh, like teaching, taught in school that something is right or something is wrong, well, you start limiting everything and measuring everything but what you have been taught by your local society, by your neighborhood, by your clan that grows uh, uh, around you. And with Tao, there is finally the opportunity to experiment at the global level uh, with um, many different people, many different cultures, many different point of views and explore models, explore processes, explore ways of slaying model, <laughs> of becoming um, not only decentralized but also avoid coordination failures and achieve goals quicker. Um, all right, it's five to 10 where I am at. So closing words. Mm, we will continue uh, tomorrow by looking into this edition. So of course, take your time, have a look if you have the time to do so at other articles like uh, Coordination Good and Bad by Vitalik Buterin or Code is Law, Smart Contracts Explained by Finematics. Um, tomorrow we will probably take the time to look a little bit more into ownership and organization. So what it means to own your own uh, your organization. So not only be part of a company where there is a company owner or a board of directors and you're just um, a, a worker earning or an employee, sorry, uh, earning your your wage or where uh, in a public company there is a group of stakeholder which is external to the company and has a really high influx, uh, influence sorry, about what the workers should do, about what the employees should do. And we'll start to try to see how this works out um, within the house. And the great article, I don't know if we will get to this tomorrow or Otherwise, we're going to do this on Thursday. Um, this really awesome article by Peggy McCormick. Uh, this is a really recent article. Uh, Philo Holger uh, found it. And I think it's a really nice way to um, compare protocols, nation states and companies. And I think this is really spot on um, with what we are looking at in here. So uh, we do not expect you to go through all the materials, all the 19 pages within the week. It's absolutely not possible. It should be a base for discussion. It should be uh, resources uh, that you can come back to, to learn more about if this is what you're looking for. And during our, um, our uh, last season, so let's say November, December last year and the following IOTA DAO Pioneers Ideathon and the, the DAOs that came out, 
of course we all ourselves gain some learnings and um, of course you can be two people in a discord server and some ethereum or some iota uh, and define that as a DAO on the other hand you need some kind of a tr entrepreneurial spirit it's not like you can be uh, or become a DAO just for the fun of it um, there's there is a need for people to want to solve some issues that want to um, use the resources at best and want to invest their time in understanding the challenges and taking decisions so DAOs are not a solution to everything but is a nice way to explore uh, organizations and um, how to actually coordinate and cooperate with with people all around the world all right so um, last two minutes any kind of questions or any kind of um, suggestions so like hey Tony uh, before Friday where Holger or Philo makes the roundup and we go through some of uh, most of the materials is there anything you would like to talk this week or maybe tomorrow or the day after tomorrow or any kind of suggestions you would like to give all right if not i thank you very much for joining us today in this learning circle again mr whitehorse thank you very much for your contribution to today's learning circle this is how i would love to have these uh, sessions going forward so where you contribute you all of course not only mr whitehorse but you take the time to um, bring to the group what you've learned you can you cannot do anything wrong we are all uh, practitioners we're all uh, trying to learn so uh, it is really helpful for us um, to to share knowledge but um, also reflecting the Feynman technique if you can explain it you understood it and by explaining it it helps you understand what you're learning even more so um, let's say that we wrap it up for today so thank you very much and see you tomorrow have a really nice time uh, and um, enjoy your hours and see you hopefully tomorrow and later and latest on Friday for the roundup. Thank you very much and bye everyone. Thank, Thank you. Thank Good you. evening. Cheers. Cheers. Bye. Thanks, Tony. Bye. Bye. Sorry, I think I pushed something out.